Please, there's been a theft at my restaurant. A safe has been stolen. Sir, the complainant is Geraldine Tan, the manager of this restaurant. What time did you make the police report? At about 9 a.m. Ms. Tan said that three items were stolen. A safe from the pantry, a trolley, and a carton of drinks. What was in the safe? $16,937.90 was reported missing. And Ms Tan also reported that the roller shutter control panel had been tampered with. Chibi, can you take a look at the control panel of the roller shutter? And uh, Nasri, check out the pantry. Thank you. Ms Tan, do you have a place to talk? Hi, Ms. Tan. I'm Senior Investigation Officer Aaron. So, what time do you notice the theft? Just before 9 a.m. I called the police immediately when I realized the safe was missing. Was there anyone present when they discovered the theft? No. I was the only one here. So, when were the stolen items last seen? Last night? Oh, but I wasn't on duty. I, I spoke to Jerry, the night shift manager. He said he was the last one to leave at 11. And the safe was still in the pantry. What about the roller shutter control panel? When I got here, it was already half open. I thought it was a little bit strange. So after I called the police, I went to check the control panel. That's when I realised the door had been forced open. There was almost $17,000 in the safe. Why is there so much money? Well, over the weekends, we don't have time to bank the money in. So every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the takings are all brought to the bank on Monday by me. Do all the employees know that the weekend's earnings are all kept in the safe until Monday? It was an open secret. Are there any present employees who might have uh, financial difficulties or anyone who has a habit of stealing? Not that I know of. Anyone that you suspect who might have done this? Well, we fired an employee recently, but he's Malaysian and he's gone back to JB already. What about the CCTV cameras? We do have CCTVs, but they're managed by an external vendor. I've already given her a call and she's on her way down. Let me know when she arrives. Thank you. From what I can tell, the pantry doesn't seem like it's been searched. This means that whoever stole the safe knew where it was kept and went straight for it. The control panel door for the shutters looks like it's been tampered with. I've asked the crime scene officers to process both the pantry and the control panel to see if they can leave any evidence. The manager told me that the safe had an earning of Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And every Monday, she will bank in the accumulated amount. Apparently, all the employees seem to know about this SOP. So, the best time to rob the safe will be on Sunday after business hours because that's when the most money would be in the safe. And since all the employees knew about this, it could have been an inside job, which is supported by your assertion that the suspect seemed to know where the safe was. You guys go and see if the more CCTV can narrow down your time frame. I'll wait here and talk to the restaurant CCTV vendor. She's on the way. Let's go.
Can you please rewind this? Here, stop. Jardine, do you recognize him? No. I can't really see his face properly with the cap and the mask on. Can you please send me this CCTV footage? And I'll need a list of the present and the past staff, the name and the personal particulars. Pause. Can you fast forward? That's our guy. Can you trace his route to see where he entered and exited the mall? Sure. How's everything, guys? Aaron, we found him on the mall CCTV footage and determined that he entered via the west exit and exited the same way at about 12.50 a.m. 12.50 a.m.? Why is the west exit open until so late? Because it's for the mall and retail employees only. Since like the suspect knew exactly where to enter and exit from. Sounds more and more like an inside job. But if it's an inside job, why steal the whole safe? Why not just open it and take the money? Unless he didn't know what the passcode was. Let's not rule out any possibilities. Chiwi, continue trawling at CCTV footage. See if you can find more leads. And Nasri, let's canvas the area around the west exit. Sir. Sir, this is the west gate. Okay. Okay, I'll go over there and you go over there. Let's go. Okay, coming now. It's a safe. But it's empty. Okay, Nasri. Let's get the crime scene officers to come and process the safe. Let's get Chiwi to check if any of the mall CCTV camera managed to get a shot of the suspect dumping the safe here. With any luck, we'll be able to ascertain his identity. Hey Nas, do you have the forensic report? Yep. And there was no fingerprint or DNA evidence found. Mm. Moreover, the safe was not tampered with. Which means the suspect knew the passcode to the safe. Nasri, can you call the manager and see how many people know the passcode to the safe? Sir. Sir, I've got a lead. Yes. You managed to get a shot of the suspect dumping and opening a safe? No. Unfortunately, there are no CCTV cameras around the area. Mm. But I've got something better. One of the mall's CCTV cameras managed to catch the suspect leaving in the taxi. I tracked down the taxi driver and found out that he dropped the suspect off at Geylang. He was caught on pole camps all the way to Geylang Street 22F, but then we lost track of him. And pole camps didn't catch him leaving Street 22F either. Maybe he lives there? Geylang? I don't think I've known of past and the present employees lives there. Did the Polecam manage to get a good shot of the suspect before I lost sight of him? Not really. This is the best image we could find. The manager says that almost all the employees knew the passcode to the safe. Okay, never mind. Let's go to Geylang Street 22F and ask around. Hi. Hi. Am I own Nasri? Mm -hmm. Have you seen this person? No, I didn't see. Uncle, I'm Io Chiwi. Have you seen this person? Okay, thanks. 
I'm SIO Aaron. Have you seen this person? Hi ma'am, I'm Investigation Officer Chiwi. Have you seen this man? Yes, he came here yesterday. Okay, I'll need to retrieve the footage for this camera and this camera for me. Thank you. Guys, I found a CCTV footage of the suspect boarding a taxi. I got in touch with the taxi driver. He confirmed that the suspect was Chinese while the female was a foreigner. I have two clips. And that's the second one. Where did they alight? Block 20, Boogies Road. Boogies? I think one of the former employees of the restaurant lives there. Nasri, can you pull up the list? There's a Donny Lee who lives at Block 10, Boogies Road. Unit 0605. Worked for the restaurant until six months ago, when he was fired. I just did a search on the police database. Donny Lee has a long string of prior offences, mostly for robbery and theft. Okay, let's head there now. Chiwi, can you get Henry and Stella to meet us there? I think we have our men. Let's go. Hi, ma'am. I'm SIO Aaron from the police. Is Donnie Lee staying here? He's not at home. Can we come here and take a look? Sure. Do you know where is he? I have no idea. Did your husband come home last night? I think he came back after 1 a.m. But I'm not sure. I was already sleeping. There's no one here, sir. This is SIO Aaron from Clementi Division. Suspect at Boogie's Road Raid escaped to Block 11. We need backup to conduct search and apprehension. Roger. QCC to Alpha 2 Romeo 1 over. Send over. Proceed to Block 11 Boogie's Road. Case of SIO from Clementi Division require assistance to search the block. Roger, acknowledge. Proceeding from Victoria Street. QCC to Alpha 2 Romeo 2 over. Send over. Case of SIO from Clementi Division require assistance to search the block. Proceeding from Bayfront Avenue. Sir. Okay, cover this area and take note of the two lifts. Okay, let's go. Sir. Cover this exit. Good afternoon, officers. We are looking for this suspect. So here's the plan. We have got all the ground level exit covered. So Chiwi, Nasri, take one man each. You're going to cover the block from the bottom to the top. Chiwi, go to your left. Nasri, go to your right. Henry and I will take our men and we're going to cover the block from the top to the bottom. With two teams going up and two teams coming down, we're going to catch the suspect in a pincer maneuver. Let's flush him out. Let's go.
I'm SIO Aaron. Are you Donny Lee? Yes. You're under arrest for housebreaking by night. Cut him! We found $14,323.25 hidden in the sofa in your flat. Yes. I stole the money. Where's the bag that you're carrying that night? I threw it away. What about your girlfriend or wife? Did they know anything about this? No. They don't know anything about the robbery. You used to be the manager of the restaurant. Is that how you know about the passcode to the safe? Yes. Then why go through the trouble to steal the whole safe? I didn't want you to suspect a former employee. So I tried to throw you off by stealing the whole safe and breaking the control box for the roller shutters. What about the box of drinks? I wanted to make it look like a delivery. So I covered the safe with a black plastic bag to disguise it. Then I put a carton of drinks on top so it looked like I was making deliveries. Johnny Lee Kok Ming was convicted of housebreaking and theft by night and sentenced to 42 months imprisonment. In the case you've just seen, the suspect has stolen close to $17,000 cash from the shop. Officers from the Clementi Police Division conducted extensive ground investigations and trawled through hours of CCTV footage to establish the identity of the suspect. Johnny Lee was eventually arrested by the police within 15 hours of the reported crime. To avoid becoming a victim of housebreaking and theft, here are some tips. Do not keep large sums of cash and valuables in your premises. Keep all drawers locked and secured. Ensure that all doors, windows and other openings are well secured with quality grills and closed shackle padlocks. Install CCTVs and alarm system within your premises where possible. Ensure that they are tested periodically and in good working condition. The night before the scam, I thought that I received a text from my business partner saying hi, which I replied immediately. He then proceeded to ask me for an SMS saying that he's getting a free shopping voucher for it. I forwarded that message and he asked which telco it was. And after that, another SMS asking me to forward pin numbers to him. However, I got suspicious and called him and he immediately told me that his WhatsApp was compromised and his lockout and therefore do not answer any of his messages. The next night, I received a few calls from an overseas number which I did not reply and after which my WhatsApp locked me out for the next 11 hours. Thereafter, a lot of friends called me overnight asking me whether I've sent them messages asking for SMS and PIN numbers. However, it was too late. A few of them told me that they have already sent the SMS and have gotten a scam of $50 to $56. As I'm a trusted person, my friends felt obligated to reply to my text when they thought I said hi. The lesson to learn from this is, when anybody sends you such a message, is to call them and verify whether it is truly them. And therefore, I now tell them to please set in their 2FA and to get out of voicemail or to set in a new PIN number for voicemail to prevent the hacker from getting in. As shared in the interview, anyone can be a victim of a scam. Once your WhatsApp account has been compromised, the scammer can impersonate you and scam your contacts into disclosing their personal details or banking credentials and one-time passwords. To avoid becoming a victim, here are some tips. Never share your WhatsApp account verification codes, personal information, banking details and OTPs. Beware of unusual requests received over WhatsApp, even if sent by your WhatsApp contacts. Protect your WhatsApp account by enabling the two-step verification feature. Change your voicemail account's default PIN or deactivate your voicemail account if you don't use it. Let's take active steps to protect ourselves and our loved ones and be a scam-wise community. If you need advice, please call our anti-scam helpline at 1-800-722-6688 or go to www.scamalert.sg. We have come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. I'm DSP Jonathan Lim. 
Until next time, do your part to prevent, deter and detect crimes.